Oh, first of all, there are uh, reference books for the uh, habitat management. Uh, actually, these two are books. This is the new one by my supervisor, Alex Kinpa, on hyperplane arrangement and introduction. This is the uh, one of the oldest and standard book so far. That is by Orlik and Terao, Arrangements of Hyperplanes. Uh, and these are, first one is the lecture notes by Richard Stanley, an introduction of, uh, to hyperplane arrangement. And this is also a sort of introduction of Metroid theory. So if you want to study Metroid theory as well, so this is also a good reference for that one. I mean, to start, to have an introduction. Okay. So let's start with K, which is our field, either R or the set of, or, or the field of real numbers. And V is of our vector space of dimension L. And A is just a finite collection, which means there are only N uh, hyperplanes in, in a course B. Right, and these are alpha i's, which are the linear polynomial associated to the, to each hyperplane. Okay, so I have just recall these notations and know what I'm doing. So we know that there is a intersection lattice already. It's just the collection of all non-empty intersections of hyperplanes in your arrangement, and we have seen that it makes a uh, faucet here, a geometric faucet. Okay, so now we have here, uh, what I have written here, it is Orlik Solomon ideals. Uh, so this is Orlik, is the same Orlik, the author of this book, Solomon ideas and how they are defined. We will start with an exterior algebra, which is based on, I mean, basis element are the corresponding element in your hyperplane arrangement. So there are N hyperplanes. So this means that this, this has N basis element, right? So this is uh, exterior algebra and I have taken this one as an ideal in that one. I will define later on what is, what does this mean or what is the map of this uh, uh, partial of E, I, uh, up to IP and the corresponding indices because these indices are the corresponding hyperplanes. Uh, so you will choose those in indices such that these hyperplanes uh, uh, as a set is dependent one, right? Okay, and then we will take the quotient. Uh, this one by the exterior algebra, we get uh, 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 an algebra which is called Orlik Solomon uh, algebra. And in other setting, we have the Orlik Terao ideals, which is sort of the symmetric or the commutative analog of these ideals. I mean, from here to here, this either symmetric or the commutative analog of these settings. So the symmetric one, because you know that the exterior product is not symmetric. One, yes. What is P here? What, where is P? Uh, okay. It's but some I'm number. Huh? It's some P. It's some P. So all possible. All possible combination where you have linear, uh, uh, sorry, dependent set, the corresponding element will be the generator so of your or, or only, of your only idea. the boundary map, right? I, I will define. I will define. At this moment, just I'm saying that this is just the symmetric analog of this one. So there, here we have the exterior algebra, but here we have the symmetric algebra, which is nothing just a polynomial. Ring. And again, you can see that these variables are just depending, are the corresponding variable to each hyperplane. Right? Okay. And now, what is the ideal here? Ideal is just again, this is some map. Maybe I let, let me just call this one is one and this one is two because these two are different map or different notations, maybe. So, So this is just uh, uh, an ideal here and how it is defined. You can say that we have, we are taking here linear combination of these H of I, I, P and these uh, variables which are appearing in this uh, setting is again the corresponding to the hyperplanes which are dependent. So from the, 
both definitions of the ideal are depending on are depending on this the uh, uh, how the uh, or your dependency of the uh, hyperplanes in your range of course this is defined in different setting and that is defined in the exterior setting and this is in the symmetric setting right what are bi's i will define later on what are actually bi bi's and if you will just take the quotient of this one that is called the early Perot ideal algebra sorry this is just a symmetric uh, case yes, of just yeah. a, a symmetric translation or analog of the early solomon ideal okay now let's go back to this definition early solomon ideals or the algebra and let's see what is going here so we know that what is the exterior algebra means so we have this wedge relation which is the product between any two elements in e which means the basis element so you know that ei well when you will take a wedge with itself this will give you zero and uh, if you want to compute uh, commute this one you will get some some minus sign here right so every exterior algebra can be can be graded in such a way that these are grades of your algebra so you have just n uh uh you have just uh they are only n plus sorry it's starting from zero n plus one grading parts because if you want to see what is e n plus one it will be zero just because one of the basis element will be repeated here so that's why you get zero okay here one more thing which i want to mention here this is the notation so whenever it is written that e i j is the same as e i wedge with e j right to save my time okay uh, so this means that each component when the pth component is defined as just this k with this b basis element so here you have just to take the strict inequality here mm -hmm. so that no one is repeated here and because the order doesn't Uh, matter in the basis element because they are dependent, so that's why you will just pick in that order. Okay, and now this is our boundary map. This actually map is going from p to p minus one, but generally it will it because the linear map, so you can raise to e as well. So what's going on here? So you are just removing. It's like a boundary map. You have already seen in the uh, Sarah's lecture last week. so you are just taking the alternating sum of the removing one of the uh, uh exp uh, sorry indices from this e right for example if you want to see what is this one so this is nothing just 2 3 minus 1 3 plus 1 2 right Shaheen, P yes. is fixed in every case, so no, P no, will vary. P, P will vary, right? P is varying from zero to n. Yeah. So here, one more thing you can see that e zero is nothing just the k itself, because here we are taking the algebra over k. So let me just write k. I am talking about the ideal case when you are taking the. No, ideal. no, here P is not fixed. P is not fixed. No, no. P is P is can be varied. So we will see in a moment. Okay. So this is always true, and e one is nothing just is just the direct sum of these copies e i, where i is from one to right? Because when you will see that p is just is equal to one, so that's why this is just denoted by single each uh, basis element. and of course to see what is e2 e2 you can see from here it could be general one okay because you have here a graded ring so this means that i is an ideal in e so we can have the grades of ideal as well so what are the grading of ideal it's just ip is same as ep intersection with i right okay that's great so this means that in this way we can write each ideal 
zero to n. And similarly, we can fix the grading of our a as well. But one thing, one thing you can notice from here. So I let me just remember this is this one. So A is from zero to N, A to A I. But I can remove here N and I can write here N. Why? This is true. Because at the maximum uh, N level that we just for the exterior product. Now, exterior product can go up to n nth level, but when you are taking the quotient, you can go just to l level, because when you want to see, uh, okay, because i l plus one. What is i l plus one? Look at the definition. So here you need ha to have i p plus one element. I mean p plus one. Sorry, l plus one hyperplane arrangements. So L plus one hyperplane arrange uh, any set of L plus one hyperplanes. That set is always dependent because you are yeah. living in yeah. L-dimensional space. So that's why this is nothing just equal to. And this is true actually for all P greater than L. So that's why your. Uh, um, Grading will stop at i. So all other cases are going to be zero, right? EP yeah. and IP is going to be zero. So yeah, they will be same. So that's why that will be just uh, be zero. Okay. In symmetric case? No, it's, it's, we are talking about the exterior case. Yes. So at this moment, we are just talking about the only sum of one, uh, ideals or the other, right? Okay. So, again, let's see some example. So, let's take our favorite example, or maybe which we have already discussed about that one. Uh, is this the central arrangement in C2, right? That maybe these are lines. Right? That is over. Which means that it is nothing just this one. <clears throat> okay, so let's calculate in this case what are our uh, ideal is, or maybe our all x along one algebra. So we know that a not is always. Let's go for three hyperplanes. Okay, it's fine. It will go with three or with n or with something like that. Just keep it. Keep okay, okay. Four, four, yeah, um, uh, I understand. Okay, so for example, if we want to calculate what is a naught, we know that in this case it's nothing just a. And what is here? I naught. What will be I naught? Can you guess? So, so I know it means that you have to keep uh, you you need to keep in your set one arrangement, right? So what is that one? One arrangement is always linearly independent. So that's why there is nothing. So it's just zero. Clear? So this is just zero. So that's why you write it. And now let's go for this one. One. Okay, this we know that i equal to one to n a p i. What is this one? So for i one, we need two hyperplanes which are li linearly dependent. So two arrangements in this case. What are those? Is there any pair which is linearly dependent? No, because everyone is intersecting here. Because there is no parallel plane, no parallel lines actually. 
So that's why there is no such thing. So this means that this is again zero. So you have this, this one, yes. Okay, that's great. Now let's come to, so, so, so at this moment we know that our only Solomon algebra has just three copies, three graded components, because we will go just up to two. So what is A2? Right here, AI, which is just uh, sorry, because this is a quotient tree, so I'm just replacing this one by the quotient of this. Uh, I mean, I just I have just replaced these EIs by the quotient image in our quotient tree, quotient algebra, right? Okay, so now for I2. To calculate I2, we need to have here three elements, right? So, so three arrangements are linearly independent or dependent. And what are the, those three triples? Can you guess? Uh, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, which three hyperplanes or lines are linearly dependent here? Linearly dependent. Okay, so for example, if we will pick any three of them, they are linearly dependent or independent? Dependent, because these are three and we are working in uh, two dimensional space. So every three, it's not just particular any, uh, particular three lines, but if this is true for all three tuple, your set will be dependent one. So this means that you will have everything here, which means that this is generated by this boundary map of E, I, J, K, where I right? And what is this one? This is nothing. We have already seen this thing is I, Sorry, J K minus I K plus I J. So this means that we have this relation for every triple I J K, right? So this gives us after removing this calculation. I mean, because this is a relation, so I can replace uh, I maybe one J or something like that with the other relation. So what I will get here, I will get just this thing. I A N I N minus one. For example, if you just have n is equal to three, then you can easily see that you have just one relation, which means that to in for from the total number of relations, you can, you will skip one of them. So that's why you get this thing. A1, A2, A2, A3, or A1, A3. So you can skip one of that because you have one relation here. Okay. Yes. So now we have this. It's uh, this K. Which is equal to one to n k a i a i a n where i is common n minus one. Right? Okay. So so far this is over all its Solomon algebra in this case. So let me just recall from the previous tutorial that what was this space, the complement of this arrangement. If you remember, 
it was just the n minus one of this right sum of n minus one times s one cross s one. Okay, so if you know this one, can you calculate the cohomology of this uh, this conjugal space? The zeroth one. Can you guess? Or I mean, if you have some background in that one, then you can see that this is nothing. Just if you are taking the cohomology over k, let's go the coefficient in k. So this is nothing just k because it's counting the uh, connected components. So, the, so that's why your uh, cohomology algebra will be this one. This is nothing just counting the loops. So here are n plus one. Oh, sorry, n minus one plus one, which is n. So this is nothing just uh, like n. And here we have. n minus one. It's two dimensional things which we are counting here. So it's sort of a like uh, if n is equal to two, then it's just a torus. So in that case, you have one of them because here are like sort of uh, like uh, n minus one torus. So that's why you will get here something the n minus two. Okay. So so you can see that this was nothing just. This is not surprising actually. This is the Olic Solomon theorem, which says that actually this Olic Solomon algebra is the same as the cohomological algebra of your complement of the arrangement. So this is a this says that this algebra is nothing but the same as the cohomology of this one. So this gives us that your cohomology is combinatorial one. I mean, this can be calculated by the combinatorial of A. So it's not depending on anything else. It's just depending on the combinatorics of the arrangement. I mean, how they are intersected, how they are dependent, how they are linearly independent, right? So there are main questions in this theory, arrangement theory. What are other topological invariants which are coming through the combinatorial? So are there um, other topological invariants? Which, are, which can be determined by combinatorics. Combinatorics means that the intersection matters because we are just taking the intersection of the arrangement, which gives us the they are independent or linear, right? So I will just name mark that, for example, we have the first invariant which usually discuss in the algebraic topology that is the first fundamental theorem of that space. Or because here we have already discussed about the cohomology is already combinatorial one, so we can ask the question: What about the local cohomology? So you already you have already seen. The local co definition of the local cohomology in the uh, ring cases, but it can be defined for the topological uh, spaces. So, local cohomology and there are further void invariants which in the list. So, so the first question is is it combinatorial one? For example, if you are saying that. Combinatorial one means that if you have the intersection lattice of two arrangements, they are isomorphic or maybe sort of equal, then what 
we have the isomorphism between these groups or not? So answer is no. This is not true in general. Okay, what do you mean by the isomorphism of L of A1? You mean, I mean as a poset? As a poset. There is as a poset. And even this does imply that the local cohomology is also not same. So this means that these two invariants are not combinatorial. But one can ask to find some classes of line arrangement or the generally hyperplane arrangement for which these are combinatorially determined. So me and uh, Raza has uh, has some class which is with the class of line arrangement in projective space, not in the uh, uh, C2 affine space, where uh, this local cohomology is combinatorial one. Is combinatorial. Yeah. And, and in other part with Yoshinaga, we have uh, again, a class of line arrangement in C2 for which uh, this fundamental group is combinatorially determined. So there are a lot of other results and uh, there are a lot of other classes for which people have tried to find out when these uh, uh, fundamental group or the local systems they are linearly uh, sorry they are combinatorial one or not. In general, they are not, but you can still find some classes or some criteria on the uh, arrangements that gives you this combinatorial setting. So you mean here you you discuss a real projective case or complex projective? Not clear. And, uh, uh, so you did some compactification from the real case or okay, no, something? it's just like C3. If you will consider a central arrangement in C3, so this you can just consider it as a conical uh, projectile that one, and you will get C2 over C, and that's like your arrangement, projective arrangement in that one. So every central arrangement in I plus one. Can be viewed. Dimension can be viewed seen too. as a projective in a projective space of dimension i. So, can, uh, okay, uh, a naive question. Uh, can we extend, uh, bring this particular result in the real, uh, okay, complex plane setting for general affine plane, general affine setting by yes, deconing? Yeah. Yes, we can do. If we have some, some line arrangement in this setting, we can decon that one and we get, get the results. But that's perfectly fine. You are talking about either a fine or this central one. Or central one is ex exactly the same as like you are talking about the projective one. Right? But in that case, you're, of course, uh, uh, okay. Mm. So. So these, these questions are not uh, about the, uh, really uh, about the geometry or something, but it's related to the algebraic topology and combinatorics as well, right? Sorry, uh, can you give some example for the projective hyperplane arrangement for, for the participant? So just, uh, uh, definitely that. you can't sketch, but uh, just for if it. If you have this C3, X, Y, Z, for example, this is central arrangement C3, you can just consider because every uh, I, I must say that central L plus one arrangement can be viewed as L uh, projective uh, arrangement in P L. Oh. If you are taking the 
facing than the field view while the field C when the field is applied. Okay. So you just need to project the projectiles because central means your polynomial is already homogeneous. homogenized. It's homogeneous. So you just need to pick because you know that PL, how is PL is defined? It's just taking these homogeneous coordinates. Why are you taking L dimension of oh, the projective okay. space? L, L. Uh, because here I am considering L plus one L which means that is lying in L C L plus one. Oh, okay. So this can be viewed here in this setting. And this result was uh, general for L or P2? Your result, one? yeah. Yes, for line arrangement, means this is P2. Okay, so. So this is about the story of about uh, the Ehrlich Solomon algebra and how it is related to the topology of the complement of the arrangement. And so there are a lot of other questions because this list is not just the, depending on these two. There are a lot of other varieties, characteristic varieties which is associated to this arrangement and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of many questions are there if you want to go in this direction. Okay, now let we come to the setting of uh, symmetric algebra, right? So it's a commutative part. <laughs> okay, is there any questions so far? Because now I'm moving to the other graph. Uh, did you define pi one for the participant? I was wrong. Sorry, what? Pi one. Did you define pi one for the participant? It's first fundamental group. No, I didn't define anything, right? So, but uh, uh, if you have some background in algebra topology, then definitely you are familiar with this meaning of fundamental. But the homology and cohomology you have already seen a lot of times from the last week, so that's why it's good to see. How it is coming, but I, I'm not defining these things there. But local cohomology you have already seen in different settings. This is the same. If you will convert that one, you will get the cohomo local cohomology for the uh, topological spaces as well. Right? Okay. If there is no question, so let's come to this setting. Uh, to only to uh, say now ideas, right? So. So here, uh, as I said that, we will start from the, sorry, this is not S. Uh, Ma'am, yes. uh, what would be the case in terms of relative cohomology? Relative cohomology is, uh, again, the cohomology setting the fact. It's depending on the simple cohomology with constant coefficient. It's depending you are taking the cohomology with constant coefficient or the cohomology with local co 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 coefficient. But I think there is another subset that we are using, not the full space, but relative to us. But the relative is depending on the part of your topological uh, space. So here, to here comes cohomology is something different. This cohomology definition has different, and you can discuss with this some relative portion or with respect to some space subspaces the same is true for the local cohomology is defined for general spaces and you can then you can uh, study for the relative one so relative is just de depending on which kind of uh, cohomology you are using either the constant coefficient with or with the local here the coefficients are different in in local and constant uh, cohomology Okay. Okay, so now let's come uh, to how we'll define these Orlik Serao ideas or and algebras. So we have this map phi, which is starting from S1. S1 is just uh, S is just the polynomial ring with so here is L, sorry. Uh, with L variables and each yi is corresponding to 
HI. Right? So each Y I is corresponding to H Y. So this is the first grading component of this algebra, which is this one. And we are taking a map from here to this uh, symmetric algebra of, or the dual uh, uh, algebra of this uh, vector space, which is nothing just this uh, symmetric algebra. So we are taking this, we are mapping Y I to alpha I. So you, you will just replace Y I with alpha I in this map and nothing else, right? So after that, what you will get, if you will consider the kernel of this one, kernel of this map, what will be that one? This gives you the dependency of the hyperplanes, right? So this is the kernel of this map is denoted by F of A and it is called relation space because this gives you a relation between or dependency between the hyperplanes. So, because this is a kernel of phi, so this means that you will just collect what kind of C linear com uh, uh, combination gives you zero in this case. And that is the kernel. So, 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 so for example, if you will take the image of this one, this will be this one, and that is zero. So, this is coming from this setting. If you don't have any relation, for example, if you don't have any relation, for example, in this case, then this relation space is just zero one because you don't have any dependency there, right? So, so this means that this is depending on, on the relations between the hyperplanes. So that's why it's called relation space because it's collection of all uh, relations between the hyperplanes and then you will just corresponding terms or you can say that linear uh, polynomials in that case, right? And here this partial is defined in this way. You will just pick a relation from here because relation means that you have this combination. Right? Because this is coming through here and this is coming through this here. Because you have dependency, then definitely you have some linear combination which gives you zero. So this for this relation, we define this map, this uh, uh, notation in this way. It's again like you are just at each step you are just removing this variable. So, for example, let's do some example. So, one thing you can notice here: what is the difference between Orlick Solomon ideal and Orlick Terao ideal? Here you are also looking for the dependency, but here you have more information about the arrange uh, about the hyperplane because here you are counting or you are seeing how it's depending on each other so these rates are very important here so this gives you more information than for like solomon algebra or idea right okay and now we will have this idea and so let me just define what is our idea here just R where R is in relation space. Okay. So R is in relation space. So let's see some example here. So here we have in C3 and uh, the corresponding polynomials are this is x1 
this defining ideal can be zero when uh, we yes, have only when two no when there is no relation the, like when they are in independent yeah in this case yeah, in in this case, yeah. Okay, so for example, if you have uh, this arrangement in C3, then you can see that there is one relation, right? So we have this relation alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 minus alpha 2 is equal to 0. So this is the only relation here. So that's why our ideal will be just generated by this polynomial of degree, of course, they are 4, so it's 3. So we are going to miss one here too. Okay, so I will write this monomial in this form, which has the same meaning y2, y3, y4. Okay. So for my convenience, no for yours. Okay, so this is one, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, okay. One to four. One to four, one to three. Okay. So this is your idea. And of course, if you will just take the quotient one, then you will get the early cut off. Okay. So, so uh, yes. the generator of these ideals are necessarily be the independent side. In the independent linear spaces, right? Yes, because this is a relation, which means that your hyperplanes, this set is actually dependent. Dependent. And then from there you find. Because this set is dependent, and these coefficients also does matter here because this is a point yeah, yeah. And here we don't care about the coefficients here. How they are dependent, those weights doesn't matter in that case, but here it allows. Minus Oh, so this is, I mean, let me adjust. This is minus. Because there is one relation, so that's why this is principal yeah, ideal, but is usually, principal usually ideal. it is not the case. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, let me just give uh, one. Yes, question? No, uh, I guess you know, we can give one, two, three, five, one, two, three, five, one, two, three. Because when you are taking here one, so they, you are missing one. Yeah. Four the complement. Party here, this is one. Alpha one, ka jo complement hai, one, two, one, one means that you will miss yes, one variable y one. Uh, alpha one is corresponding to y one, so you will miss y one in that part. And rest of the uh, variables will appear. Um, okay, so. So we say that this A is too formal if this relation space is generated by, by all relations um, all re relations uh, All the relations uh, depending on only three hyperplanes. Which means that, so we can say that this is nothing just generated by like these kind of polynomials, I, J, or something. This degree two. So if it's generated by the degree two polynomial, then definitely we will say that this is too formal. And we can extend this definition to GA formal 
but it is depending on this number k plus one right okay so now i will give a small uh or a motivation why we are interesting in these uh the setting because as we have already seen that this has some extra information and uh, uh there are some example where we can see that sorry this is all in pair f of a is just this relation space which is the kernel of this one uh, all right so, this is just a collection of all relations but the all uh, the row is just the this one is a map oh this map okay so let me just uh, give you an example where we can see that we have the lattice is the same which means so that the combinatorial f of a d k uh, algebraically if i view this is going to be a homogeneous ideal of degree 2 homogeneous ideal it is generated by the relation of this i mean here you can see that there are just two uh, terms involved in a relation uh, so 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 can you can you give so an example of uh, so can you give an example of f of e so uh, this is formal not, this is not two formal this is three formal sort right yeah. It's a sort of three formal, but it's not two formal. Uh, so what I mean is that uh, in the above example, this is a homogeneous ideal of degree three. Yes, because your relation is containing three three four four uh, oh, four, 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 four. four. If your relation is just three. containing only three, then and then you still uh, generate your whole uh, relation space, then it is called two formal. So this ideal is going to be a homogeneous so ideal, ideal of degree three. Yeah. Okay, so this one. I mean, I will not doing any calculation in that example because uh, it's not uh, it cannot be done by hand. But I will just give you motivation why we are interested in such setting. I mean, this gives you the like the the, the, the both arrangements have the same combinatorics, but actually they are. They have different uh, answers, like in terms of or in uh, their own ideas. Okay. Or we can say that the two formal is not combinatorial because in that example, one of the uh, arrangement is two formal, the other one is not, but they have the same combinatorial data. Two formal is not and this is uh, my using C. Can you give some conclusion? Yeah. So there's the defining polynomial for this one. And then C3, you can see that. Okay. X. Okay, this is the first one, and the second one, these hierophants are same, but the last two are different, so I'm going to write those ones again. So, 
again, let me just draw this arrangement. I mean, uh, okay. I mean, these three are not parallel, so that's why I'm just uh, drawing in that way. So this is something here. And this is going to come here. This here. So we just need this here. Why I'm these are multiple points or multiplicity three here. Right? So this is deconic I mean decon of this uh, arrangement. Right? Because you have drawn in C2. Yeah, then C is equal to one. Okay, if you will draw actually these two uh, arrangements, you can't see any difference, right? With the naked eyes. But if you will look carefully, these six points, if you will study these six points, they will either lie on a smooth conic or not. So for example, in the first part, I mean for, for the uh, first uh, arrangement, it uh, these six points. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, the second one. These six multiple points lie on a smooth point. But here they don't. I mean, this is so surprising and uh, definitely uh, I use Winsky as the one who maybe has noticed, but he has noticed, he has proved that actually the first one is formal, too formal. And A2 is not too formal. Uh, what is its relation with the smooth points? Uh, it's a geometric. In terms of geometric, so, it means so this means that two formal formality is not depending on the just the combinatorics. It's more depending on the geometry as well. I mean, how they are depending on uh, each other. I mean, it's just not you are not just counting everything here. You need to see that how they are linked with each other. Actually, that is the difference between this one part and that one part. Here, you don't care about anything. Because here you are just counting multiple, how many uh, multiple points are there of multiplicity two, of multiplicity two, three, and so on and so forth. But here you need to see the position of those points as well, which of course cannot be determined by those early Solomon ideals, but here you can do, because here we have these weights. Right? Okay. Um, so, uh, yes. Um, A2 is too formal, but A2 is not too formal. Yes, A2 is not too formal, but so A1 what, is too formal. What does it follow that too formal is not combinatorial? Of course, you, you are not, uh, I mean, just following from directly. You have to do this calculation. You need to collect all the relations from here. Mm -hmm. And then you need to see that, can you generate your uh, relation space with just, uh, uh, triple of arrangement, a uh, triple of hyperplanes or not. Of course, this this could be an exercise, and one can try to do what's going My on. My point is that if A2 is not too formal, so uh, why this is a befitting example that a too formal is not combinatorically determined? You understand my point? Yes, because they have the same. Okay. Oh, same combinatorial lattice. Ah, okay. 
because if you will look uh, if you will draw roughly of this arrangement then you will get the same thing here ah, okay. you can't see any difference because i said that this, this is uh, these six points lie on this smooth conic and this doesn't you i mean you, it doesn't matter for the uh, for the latest Okay. Okay. Now I. Okay. Now I got. Okay. Is there any other question? Okay. Let me just uh, finish, or maybe uh, just few remark about uh, about these uh, space. This space has the dimension. Can you guess what is the dimension of this space? I think this is a not, but this is somehow. Uh, uh, doable question. So the dimension of this space over k is n minus, yeah, n minus r rank of a, yeah. right? And uh, furthermore, you can one can observe that this ideal is actually the prime ideal of four dimension. N minus this same one. Okay, so I think so. I uh, will stop here. So that's why. Okay, in the next lecture. What I will do, let me just uh, say a few words about my next lecture. Um, now, what we will do, we will see further more properties of this ideal. We have already seen that this is prime ideal, but we will we can see that why it, uh, this is Cohen Macaulay, right? And furthermore, we will see that that has linear resolution or not. Right, and uh, maybe one more thing, which I will connect this one to the broken circuit uh, complex of uh, our arrangement, because you are familiar with the broken circuit basis of Metroid. So in our case, it will be the same one, because in our case, Metroid is just the uh, basis of the Metroid is just the linearly independent set in our set A. I mean, linearly independent hyperplane in your arrangement. And that gives you the broken circuit complex. And we will see that how it is related to this one. Okay. Uh, or maybe it will have, of course, some time. We will see some proofs as, as well. Okay. Any question? Yeah. Any question from the audience? Maybe we can check the chat box. No okay, there's no question. Okay. Uh, any question from the IBA side? No question from there. Any question from the audience? Yeah, please go ahead. For every Metroid, you can define the old Solomon algebra. Is it the same definition? Because you have Metroid, you have your linearly independent, uh, you have independent sets, and you can just do with that one the similar way. Uh, you can define when your set is dependent, right? So you you can still define in more general setting for the uh, Metroid. Yeah. Any other Any other complementary? Any other complementary in for for the arrangement uh, there is no other combinatorial structure i mean you have just this one as well. uh, regarding to every arrangement uh, uh, is there a metroid yeah um, every uh, for every arrangement there is a metroid which is a general i mean natural setting in that one you will just consider the linearly independent set as a basis element of yours or the meaning of the to define the metroid. Yeah? Uh, okay. <coughs> More question. Sorry? Metroid, we can have means in other realms. 
or any material. For every matroid, do you have an uh, arrangement? You can have, and you can define that. But it's depending, uh, okay, no, not uh, indeed, actually, I'm sorry. Um, uh, maybe you have uh, heard about the uh, uh, metroid that realized on some spaces or some, on, on some uh, uh, fields, they are re realized able Realizable or, motor or not, so yeah. it's depending on that. And, uh, yeah. Do we know something about the Betty numbers of these ideals? Uh, you will see when uh, she will discuss the linear resolution. Yeah. The battery number yeah. of these. Yeah. And uh, Shaheen, uh, there is one question. Uh, uh, what about uh, the Poincare polynomial? Does it have uh, any yes. relation with these ideas? Yes. yes. I will, uh, maybe in the next chapter, I will link to the, uh, the Orlick, uh, sorry, Poincare polynomial of our arrangement is the same as uh, actually the, uh, the Hilbert series of uh, this uh, Orlick pair already with some shifting. Some, okay. With some shifting. And if you will just consider the arterial orlick solomon uh, orlick pera ideals, then it's so the it same means, one. means the uh, exterior case. Artinian no, 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 no. Orlick pera. Orlick pera. Orlick pera. Okay. In, in that case, it's a simple one. Huh? Because here you can see that it's the same for, for, for your uh, for, I mean, this is same as this uh, a of a. I mean, if you are considering just uh, the orlick terau idea, this is the same, uh, and you are here the Poincare polynomial of the orlick Solomon algebra, this is the same as the Poincare polynomial of your uh, lattice. Okay. It's just, they, they are the same. Because here you are, you are just considering here the dimension of a i t i. Thank you. So Thank you very much. That the basis of these are just depending are actually equal to the those numbers. There. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Oh, the schedule. And you have uh, according to the schedule, you have this one only. Yeah, I, according to the schedule, I this is the last one, but you said that. I can have one more, so that's why. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, uh, uh, maybe a little bit discussion in the tutorial session after Kai Kupchas. Yeah, okay. Yeah, after Kai Kupchas tutorial, I re uh, I remind you once again that uh, today we have a tutorial with Kai Kupchas, and uh, afterward there will be a discussion session uh, where we will uh, be discussing about all possible projects which is being shared by the speakers, and maybe any participant would like to share any projects with the uh, others so this is going to happen today uh when at, uh, after 3 30. yeah after yeah after 3 30 after the tea, tea break okay and now we are heading toward we all let's thank shaheen for uh for a nice <laughs> yeah. now we are heading toward our next speaker uh